Blessings, oh, blessings, oh, blessings. Look at my life, man. That's blessings, oh, blessings, oh, blessings. I treat the beat like it's a reverend. I tell the truth like, Father, forgive me. These are all my confessions, man. This wasn't luck. It was destined. I didn't know homies who've been with me since Ed, Ed, and Eddie who flip like confetti. And then when you back... Huh. I tell you what. Since I'm on a diet, I'll make you a deal. I'm not in this cupboard, and you're not in the cupboard. The September 2020 Forbidden List changed so much for Yu-Gi-Oh! More importantly, Pantheism of the Monarch finally is at three. You should already know how I feel about Pantheism of the Monarch is three, and I'm going to make good on my promise. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a competitive anti-meta Monarch deck profile. The Monarch strategy is really good on shutting players out of the extra deck, but it also allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters as well as having a searchable skill drain. The deck is all about blessings and curses. It's stupid powerful, but enough of my blabbering. Let's jump on in. Can I like... Can I? No. Ooh. How'd you? How'd you get here? Whatever. Anyways, so the concept of the monarch strategy is rather simple. It is built on stunning the opponent, locking them out of the extra deck, and that's exactly what we're going to do in this particular profile. Monarchs are really, really good at just existing and tributing your opponent's monsters. Yeah, let's just jump on in. I'm getting really excited about this deck myself. The monsters consist of three copies of Aether, the best monarch in the deck. Getting that free tribute summon on your opponent's turn as well as the special summon, it technically searches the monarch that you need because at the end phase it adds it to the hand. Next is three copies of Erebus, the underworld monarch Erebus. Or, or however you say this guy's name, he is amazing because he does have non-targeting removal. Shuffling cards into the opponent's deck, it's also a good out for Dark and Dragoon because it's non-targeting and it's removal. This guy's also great because while he's in the graveyard, you can discard a Monarch spell or trap card to fetch a Monarch card from your Monarch monster from your graveyard to your hand. So instead of the Majesties and Vanities monsters, we do play one copy of Chaos, one copy of Thestalos, one copy of Karaz or two copies of Karaz. Now, you can actually drop the Karaz out or one of the Karazes out and substitute these three monsters for two copies of Vanity's Fiend and one copy of Majesty Fiend or three Vanity's Fiend or three Majesty's Fiend, however you see fit. But the reason why I actually decided to do that is because this deck can actually struggle going second and Vanity's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend don't necessarily help you going second. Karaz, the light monarch allows you to destroy cards in your opponent's side of the field granted you might not want to do that every single time but at least it gives you some form of an out also summoning karaz on your turn allowing you to destroy some of your cards can have double effects it gets you free draws and it gets certain cards you need from your field to the graveyard thestalos and caius are game enders like seriously game enders when going first and second respectively thestalos allows you to check your opponent's hand for hand traps and caius allows you to rid a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards off of the field, or potentially a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards off the field. Caius is really strong. Moving on to the little guys, we run three copies of Adia. Adia is really good for being able to get you your other Squire monsters and retrieve some of your banished cards, so the deck allows itself to flow consistently by continuously getting those Monarch cards to the graveyard and then banishing them for resources, and this card will add them to your hand. Two copies of Adios? I, I really don't know how to say these cards name. This guy gives you the additional normal summon as well as special summons Adia back to your side of the field. And then that one copy of Mithra. Mithra is really good, but extremely risky in the world of tokens. Parts of me wanted to play just triple Mithra and token collectors because that's way less susceptible to hand traps. And on top of that, Mithra gives you the double tribute summon. I probably will be updating Monarchs as we go throughout the format on my Patreon. So if you guys wanted to keep up with the Monarchs and the Kali effect, then go ahead and check that out. But Mithra is so good in this particular deck because again, that double tribute summon. Let me give you guys a thought. 
Imagine summoning the Mithra, then turning your Thestalos to a 6 with the effect of your domain, then tribute summoning into your Thestalos, ripping a card out of your opponent's hand. Now, all of the Big Daddy Monarchs have a clause that you can tribute summon them with only one monster if that monster is tribute summoned. Now, you tribute summon your Thestalos for the summon of your Erebus, and now you get to rip an additional card out of your opponent's hand. They get the token, that's fine. You get to rip two cards out of their hand, and they are now domain locked. That is the vision with Mithra, and the reason why I decided to play it at one. Moving forward to the spells, three copies, oh boy, is back! Pantheism of the Monarchs, this card makes the deck stupid consistent, but to be fair with you, it also makes True Dracos and Cleef Ward stupid good too. I'll possibly make some deck profiles of those later on down the line. Pantheism draw effect is not once per turn. Its search effect is, but that's a pretty busted search effect. It actually is the reason why we run so many awkward ratios of certain cards. Three copies of Domain, this card is nutty. A lot of people forget that while it does lock the opponent out of the extra deck and allows your level eight monsters to become level six, this card actually allows you to give your monsters 800 attack, so it can be a threat to Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Three copies of Return of the Monarchs. This is actually how you chain block with certain hand traps. If you make Return of the Monarchs chain link two, then your opponent can't respond to your Monarchs and vice versa. Really good against cards like Cypher and Gear Gamma. Next is three copies of the Monarch Storm Four. Who doesn't love tributing your opponent's monsters? Three copies of Tenacity, one Foolish Burial Goods, or two Foolish Burial Goods. This is to send your Prime Monarch and your Pantheism to the graveyard if you need it in a pinch. Reasoning is a godsend in this deck. Uh, a lot of times when you activate Reasoning, your opponent will declare one thinking you're playing Infernoids. If they hit Adios, that's a free uh, normal summon or a free additional normal summon on top of your regular normal summon. If they hit Karaj, you can destroy cards on the field for free. If they hit any of your Monarchs, well, guess you have free Tribute Fodder. But if they don't declare one, or even if they do hit Adia, if you have banished uh, Monarch Trap cards or Spell and Trap cards, you can add those to the hand. But if they don't declare one, Adia is a free summon and gets you another monster to your side of the field and still gets you that banish. So this card is just ridiculous in the deck. It also gets you your Monarch Spell and Trap cards to the graveyard. And as you know, in a Monarch deck, that is really good. One Foolish Burial, one Reinforcement of the Army, three copies of the Prime Monarch, and one copy of Monarchs are up. Now, I run three copies of Prime Monarch because there are times where you want this card into your hand, and sometimes when your opponent's really smart and you banish for Pantheism, they won't add the Prime Monarch to your hand. So uh, that's the reason why I play three copies of the Prime Monarch. A lot of builds are playing too, and I don't I don't blame them, but I sometimes there are you where you really need it, and then the Monarchs Erupt is a complete blowout against certain decks, against the decks that aren't extra deck reliant, Monarchs are up can literally just ruin their day because they're normally effect monster base or they need their effect monsters to continue on with their engine. That is it with the main board at 40 cards. This deck obviously does not have an extra deck, but I'll be able to share with you guys a side deck. The side deck consists of three copies of Nibiru, stopping those combo heavy decks and giving you a monster to tribute, big brain. Two copies of Majesty's Fiend. This guy is really good against effect heavy decks and three copies of Vanity's Fiend. I would normally side these guys in when I know I'm going first because again, these cards can be a complete blowout. They can be just a complete W if you're playing against the right deck. Now, I do expect some of those anti-meta decks, uh, those back row heavy decks to be played a little less with the prevalence of Harpy's Feather Duster, but I am not dumb enough to realize that, or I am not dumb enough to think that Harpy's Feather Duster is gonna prevent them completely from being played, and these guys are not useful. One copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, I think it's rightfully so regulated to the sideboard. I don't think this is a main deck card. And two copies of Lightning Storm one copy of Red Reboot, and a card that I seriously considered main decking is three copies of Evenly Match. While the Monarch deck does thrive going first, going second, and breaking the opponent's board isn't always in the cards. Regardless, the Monarch deck is a strong anti-meta stun deck, and I am excited to see it grow as the format turns out to be. So without further ado, I really don't have any combos for the deck. Let me show you a few test hands though. All right guys, so before we get into these test hands, just a card that I want wanted to point out that you guys could run if you are experiencing some difficulty with playing around infinite impermanence's effect veiler is march of the monarchs march of the monarchs is actually fairly good against 
uh, you know, meta decks that love to play Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veiler in. Unfortunately, it doesn't prevent your Squires from being hit or your Vassals, but it does give you a workaround, which I think is just really good. I'm actually considering on playing more of a March build um, and taking out Adia and Eidos for cards that are less likely to be hit. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we have for our opening hand. We're gonna get a Karaz in our hand, which is interesting. Adia, Domain, uh, Foolish Burial Goods, and another Adia. This is a very, very interesting hand, but still very playable, as I'm gonna go ahead and use that Foolish Burial Goods to send Pantheism uh, from my deck to my graveyard. And now I'm gonna banish the Pantheism to reveal and then eventually add a Tenacity of the Monarchs. Now, Tenacity of the Monarchs is going to activate on my, revealing my Karaz to add Return of the Monarchs and I essentially have full combo here, so we're still in the gold. I'm gonna normal summon Adia. Adia's effect will special summon Eidos to my side of the field. And then we'll activate Return of the Monarchs and Domain. So there's Domain, there's Return. Retrieve the Eidos for the Karaz. And now we have quite a few effects to resolve. I'll activate the effect of my Return of the Monarchs to add my Aether from my deck to my hand. And then I'll activate Karaz's effect to be able to destroy cards on my side of the field to draw cards. Fortunately, you don't have to destroy two cards every single time. I'll just destroy Adia to draw one card. And now I'll trigger the effect of my Adia to get Pantheism to my hand. And just like that, showing you how drawing Karaz is like the best thing ever sometimes. Using Pantheism on Prime Monarch to draw two more cards another domain and another prime monarch i guess that's okay in this particular hand we're pretty set up really like we're actually set up extremely well we have spell cards to be banished for our aether we have ways to get prime monarch to our side of the field and of course we can resolve the effect of aether to summon the second karaz in our deck as well as any other monsters for disruptions or for future plays and return to be able to gain an additional monster from our deck so our hand so that was a really really good hand showing you how powerful that karaz can be even when you do have uh, you know, not the hand that you exactly want or when you actually open Karaz. Going into our next hand, it's going to be really exciting to show you how powerful the Monarch strategy can be. We are going to get Foolish Burial, Pantheism, Festalos, Domain, and a Domain. So this is an interesting hand uh, just because we don't have exactly what we need. We do have Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, and that's going to serve a purpose later on, depending on what we draw. I'm going to go ahead and start off with Pantheism on the Domain. We're going to draw Prime and Tenacity, just how I expected. I definitely expected to draw the Prime after uh, afterwards, so we're going to go ahead and use the Pantheism. This is actually still okay. Pantheism is going to reveal three copies of Return of the Monarch, so you know we're going to get that from our decks to our hand. And then next, I'm going to follow up with Foolish Burial Goods to send Adia to get Pantheism back into my hand so this is gonna set us up really well hopefully we don't draw another idea i mean it does suck to well actually no i guess it doesn't matter if we draw a deal or not so next i am going to use pantheism to discard prime we are going to draw erebus and the monarch storm forth and now i'm going to use tenacity to reveal erebus Erebus. <laughs> this time around, I think I'm going to go ahead and get Monarchs Erupt since I am so set up with Prime Monarch. This is kind of ridiculous on how set up I actually am. Um, From here, oh, this is good. This is really, really, really good. We are going to banish our Tenacity to be able to special summon our Prime. This is why you play three copies of this card. And then next, we'll activate our Return of the Monarchs, our Domain. And then we will use our Domain to reduce the level of our Airburst and we'll Tribute Summon for that. We'll, we could actually Tribute Summon for the Thestalos if we wanted to, which allows us to, I think this card, yeah, it looks at your opponent's hand. I actually, no, I think that would be the better option at this current point because we'll get to look at our opponent's hand and this can actually deal with fill threats. So this will hit hand traps and whatnot. And now the effect of our return of the Monarchs will get our Aether. We are so set up. It's like, 
It's not even funny how set up we are currently. Next, I'm gonna set two cards face down, which is going to be the Stormforth and the Erupt, meaning that I can tribute my opponent's monster. All I have to do is banish for Prime, activate the Stormforth, and I will lose the Pantheism, unfortunately, which means I probably should have summoned the Airbus, but uh, we will be able to special summon or tribute summon for that Aether, which will give us another special summon and potentially tribute our opponent's cards. But if we don't wanna go that route, we can always still tribute the Thest, um, um, instead of using the Prime Monarch or use Stormforth and Tribute the Thest in our opponent's monster. So that is phenomenal. That is crazy how powerful this deck uh, or how powerful this deck is. Just showing you, it's just good. There's really no if, ands, and buts or buts around this deck. It can do some really cool anti-meta stun type things. Thank you guys so much for watching monarchs are extremely fun and this little test build is only going to grow and get stronger and stronger i'm really excited to put more monarch content on this channel if you guys want to see it go ahead and destroy that like button and let us know down below in the comment section also be sure to check out one of these other videos they're fucking phenomenal and i'll catch you on the next one